I grew up in the city, surrounded by cars, by sounds, and by constant movement, by cement and big buildings. I grew up in a time where walking down the street, it isn't uncommon to see a piece of trash every foot you go, and every time it rains, the cement is glazed in swirly purple and blue oil. As a child, I escaped through nature. I have always felt a strong connection to nature because of my native heritage. And as I grow up, I have seen the land change. The places I feel most connected to are in danger. In our culture, we say squat, samuk, staying, everything is connected, everything belongs on this web together, nothing none of our relations are higher than the other. We're equal with all of our relations and um, things like climate change impact uh, the balance of everything. Um, upsetting the balance, our, our salmon people are suffering um, from all sorts of different um, climate change indicators. When we talk about climate change, we're talking about um, the modern impact of humans on the environment. If you look at any city, you know that that city didn't exist before people lived there. Humans affect the environment that they're in. Um, we are already seeing ocean acidification effects, um, both on commercial shellfish as well as the natural environment. Um, it's becoming harder for things like clams and crabs when they're very young to lay down calcium shells because it's being eroded away. And a, a direct sort of commercial uh, response to that is many of the commercial shell fisheries have now moved their early stage growth operations outside of the Salish Sea um, because they're having so much trouble getting them established. We're also seeing, um, let's see, I think the last three summers have been the warmest, driest on record. Two summers ago, we had so much smoke in the air, we were having to cancel field work because it was unhealthy conditions for anyone to be outside uh, when it was that smoky. I get up every day and try and save this little part of the planet, and it's becoming harder and harder. And, you know, doing things like salmon restoration, wondering if there's even going to be a stream there in 20 years for the salmon to come back to, or whether, you know, the large woody debris that we're putting in is going to be some strange kind of art project in the end, um, is very concerning. In the years since colonization, this land has lost touch with the practices that sustained my ancestors. We have taken Earth's gifts for granted. Human activity has caused extensive amounts of fossil fuels to be released into our atmosphere, poisoning our streams, altering our shorelines, and pushing species to extinction. Now, we face a climate crisis that disproportionately affects indigenous coastal communities. We could watch guys go out and set a little net right here in this bay and come back with hundreds and hundreds of fish. Now we go out there and we're glad to catch seven. My dad said when seven. he was a kid, he said that there was so much fish around the whole entire bay, they'd, they'd be dead head to tail around the whole entire bay, constant. They'd have more fish than they would know what to even do with. And now it's to the point where we don't have enough fish to do it. Anything at all. The whole timing issue is probably one of the biggest things. Rains are not coming back as soon. Um, we're not getting as much of those sort of midsummer rain breaks that keep water in the rivers. So more river miles are drying up, which is obviously bad for salmon fry. Um, the timing issue of when the rains come back is a problem because salmon species naturally segregate the watershed. So your Chinook or your big strong fish, they come back first and they go highest in the watershed. Then your coho come back and use the middle section of the watershed and your chum use the lower section of the watershed. But when the Chinook are getting here, there's no water in the river, so they can't get up there. So they hang around as long as they can and they end up spawning in the lower watershed. Coho come in, they can't get up there, so they end up digging up the Chinook reds and putting their own eggs down. And then the chum come in and wipe out both because there's no way to get up to their natural places in the river. So um, 
that's a piece of it. Your warmer ocean temperatures and things affecting the lower end of the food chain are making it harder to find food. Um, you know, and that wraps all the way up to orca and, and to our own uh, consumption of those fish as well. You know, our culture is directly linked to the natural resources around us. You know, our songs and dances and, you know, all of our stories have animals and, you know, in them. And so, you know, pretty soon, like when our kids are telling these stories, they might not even know what that animal is supposed to look like if it's not around anymore. We have a really important relationship with our salmon people. We've had that relationship since time immemorial. We're connected to all things, related to all things. I mean, it's really important to think about that when we talk about greater issues like climate change. Our sacred places uh, are getting clear cut up on the mountains and those things play into different parts of climate change. Toxins build up, things get clear cut, um, and then those toxins run into our streams. Um, our streams get poisoned. The homes, the, the birthplaces for our salmon people. Um, and it's our job as indigenous folks to take care of Mother Earth and the salmon people to live in that relationship of reciprocity so that uh, we can be taken care of by the salmon people and so we can take care of Mother Earth um, in all of our relations. Well, I hope that my kids will, will know about all of the same things that I know that are connected to our culture. Um, if, if our medicines are gone, how are we supposed to teach about them? Uh, if our if our orca people are gone, um, how will the stories that we have about them relate to their lives um, if, they don't, if they don't know what these things are anymore? Um, all of these relations are so integral in our understanding of who we are here. Um, it's really important for me to be able to continue to pass that knowledge on and hopefully have those things here to be able to show my children and grandchildren and hopefully their children. If you're a voting age, vote, vote with climate in mind um, is, is definitely important. Um, but even little things locally, you know, picking up trash, not you choosing not to use straws uh, in your coffee, you know, those are plastic, those are petroleum products that increases the demand of petrol for petroleum. Um, for instance, Samish does not use single serve water bottles at any of their tribal events, none of them. We don't use them. And that's because it actually takes twice as much petroleum to manufacture the bottle as the amount of liquid it holds. It's important in our culture and as indigenous people to advocate for, for change that helps with our salmon populations and for the health of our other relations like the Kalpalavich and Ala, our orca people. I think individual people can continue to try and educate themselves, um, be more aware of their carbon footprint and be active in advocacy for making better decisions when it comes to all of the factors affecting climate change. We are at the beginning of a mass extinction. We are in the beginning of a mass extinction. We are at the beginning of a mass extinction. We are at the beginning of a mass extinction. We are at the beginning of a mass extinction.
We are at the beginning of a mass extinction. We are at the beginning of a mass extinction. We are at the beginning of a mass extinction. We are at the beginning of a mass extinction. We are at the beginning of a mass extinction. Indigenous people need our help more than ever to protect Mother Earth, who has sustained us since time immemorial. Cultural practices that are tied to these lands and waters now face the harmful effects of climate change. We need to think about the actions we take, how we consume and use resources, and how they affect our ecosystem. I invite each of you to think native and ask yourself, how will my actions today affect the future of the seventh generation? Unless we change how we live, Mother Earth won't be able to provide for future generations. We have to maintain a relationship of reciprocity. Humanity needs to learn to live in harmony with Mother Earth as indigenous people have forever. Our very future relies upon the steps we take to save our planet. Let's start making positive changes to save the beautiful planet and ensure future generations are able to see and live with the beauty that surrounds us.